This conference will now be recorded. Welcome in, everybody. Today's session, we're going to be talking about utilizing the Sager traction splint. So traction splints, what they're predominantly used for is in the event that we have a closed, isolated femur fracture. So this individual got into a ATV accident. ATV accidents, motorcycle accidents, snowmobile accidents are the number one leading cause of our femur fractures because that head-on collision propels them outwards and that femur strikes that handlebar. So indications that I could see with that specific injury, gonna be a lot of pain associated with it. The leg oftentimes is shorter than the unaffected leg. And then we're gonna see once we expose that injury site, oftentimes a large contusion um, or swelling associated with that dye. So remember, it's gotta be closed. So if it's an open femur fracture, that's a contraindication utilizing the Sager traction splint, and it's gotta be isolated. So no injuries to the hip, no injuries to the lower leg or the ankle, because we're gonna be utilizing both the hip and the ankle to try and secure that femur fracture. So the Sager, very simple to use. The wheel end always faces the foot of the patient that's affected. So if that patient's got a left-sided femur fracture, that wheel is gonna be pointed towards that ankle. In the event that I have a right-sided femur fracture, simply twist it over and now your wheel is facing that affected leg. The D-ring on top is always has to be on top. So as you can see, the D-ring's on top, that wheel space in the left side. So this is situated for a left-sided injury. In the event that I have a right-sided injury, I'm gonna rotate so my wheel is now affecting the right leg. If you notice the little black button here, I can pop that out, rotate it 180 degrees, re-slide it back in. Now I have my D-ring on top and my wheels facing that right leg. For this patient, they're complaining of left-sided pain. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my wheel's facing that side and my D-ring is on top. Okay, I'm all set. I got my three straps that are gonna secure that. There's two different sizes, two smaller ones, one larger one, the larger side or a larger strap is gonna go on the top of the leg and then the other ones are gonna secure below the injury site and then the foot and the ankle. What I should be doing is having my partner go ahead and maintain manual stabilization or manual traction at that point. Manual traction means that I'm bracing underneath and I'm actually pulling that because remember the femur fracture, those bones fracture and then they go like this. So this is the whole purpose of a traction splint, to pull those bones back to its normal position. So I'm gonna go ahead, manipulate that crutch a little bit so that it is in contour with the patient. I'm gonna slide that ankle strap underneath, make sure that it's flat, and then this is gonna rest right up in the groin area. So for your male patients, ask them to readjust themselves so that that crutch is not directly affecting the genitalia. Try and have this hip strap up as high as you can. Uh, C-Man doesn't really have good hips. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure it. Go through your D-ring and make it nice and secure. Okay, that's secure. Now I'm gonna come down to the patient's ankle. So I'm gonna slide the ankle strap and make sure that I got plenty of room to work with. So you notice that here, I have a strap that I can make that ankle strap quite a bit bigger. So there's one of two ways that you can do it. You can either go over the ankle or you can go underneath the ankle. Me personally, 
I think that if you go over the ankle, you're still getting a good secure securement of that, and then also you're not manipulating the ankle all that much. Secure your Velcro all the way around the patient, then come back to that strap that I was talking about and secure it, make sure that it's nice and tight. Now I'm ready to pull traction. So I'm gonna pull until I get 10% of the body weight or a maximum of 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure here and then I'm gonna start pulling traction. Okay, I'm at 15. I'm gonna to talk to my patient. Do you feel relief? Yeah, that feels a lot better. Most often with these femur fractures, that patient's gonna go, ah, oh, because we're going ahead and realigning those bones and then that muscle tissue that got circulated around it is no longer constricting. I'm gonna recheck CMS. I should have checked CMS beforehand and I think I forgot to. CMS is good both prior and after application of a splint. I'm gonna go ahead and take my straps. Notice that I got a larger one and two smaller ones. Larger one's gonna go on top. Go ahead and slide this. Underneath that patient, as high as you can. Secured into place. Next strap, just below the other strap. Last strap, good secure that foot and that ankle application. Okay, I'm gonna recheck CMS one more time after I apply those splints. Go ahead, check my assessment on my patient as far as pain values go. So this is a great opportunity as far as lifting and moving um, to utilize that scoop stretcher. Utilize that scoop stretcher, I can go ahead and scoop underneath and then place them on that stretcher. I can also log roll the patient onto a backboard to get them on there, but that's not very comfortable right and then. It's always best practice too to go ahead and secure both these legs together. Utilize the triangular bandage on the lower legs and the upper legs. So that does it for the Sager traction splint, very commonly used with EMS services that are out there. And it's most likely the most common one that you're gonna come across. Thanks everybody.